Tommy, uh, I'm worried. I thought we had over the last 11 episodes, I thought we had covered all the things that made me feel anxious. But now I have stumbled across a resource that reminds me that there is an entire world of things to be anxious about. And uh, it starts inside your own brain. <laughs> As all things do. All right. Uh, this week, and this is just, I'll keep it brief. This week is just a, a siren call to remind you to get your anxiety checked out. Why? Go ahead and ask me why. Pete, why? Because our bodies and minds are designed to deal with short-term threats, Tommy. This oh. comes from oh. Dr. Steve Levine. He's a board-certified psychiatrist. When chronically stressed by anxiety, our protective mechanisms turn against us and result in damage, including important brain communication circuits. And so I just wanted to run down a couple of them to remind you why you should keep your anxiety in check. And I want to see if you have any trouble with any of these things. Is that fair? Okay. Uh, right, yeah, I think so. I'm ready. All right. Number one, do you have trouble concentrating? <laughs> yep. Okay, check that one off the list. Totally on the list is you have trouble concentrating. Anxiety feels so overwhelming uh, it, that uh, it, it uh, causes you to impaired thinking uh, or mm -hmm. lack of focus. Now, let me just tell you, that is uh, uh, the least of your worries. Uh, oh. You may, number two, you may forget how to calm down. Do you have a problem with that? Forget. Yes, I have in the past. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a sign. Tom, you're oh. in the right place on this show. Am I? Uh, let's just say that. Then we've got through some others that I'll bust through here. You may uh, develop other mental health issues. That's, sure. uh, I think, goes without saying. It can lead to depression. It can lead to substance abuse. It can lead to all, all sorts of things there. Then we get to the things that really mess me up. Your brain will lay down anxious neural pathways. Oh, no. Oh, I don't care for that at all. Stop uh, laying down no. those pathways, brain. Stop that. And you know what? This is the thing. If I'm hitting myself in the head with my right hand, I can control that. I can stop hitting myself in the right hand, or I can restrain myself in some way, shape, or mm -hmm. form to keep myself. I, uh, laying down anxious neural paths, I can't see that. I can't feel it. Oh, I don't I'm not comfortable <laughs> with that. Brains are similar to muscles in that the more you use specific neural pathways, the more strengthened those routes become, says Bridget Gordon, uh, who is a psychiatric doctor of nursing. Sure, I know. This Bridget. is true for an anxious individual's brains as well. The more anxious you are about something or anxious about many little things in general, the more your brain will go back to those same anxious thoughts. No, that's not how I want it to work. I want them. I want my brain to be like, this is nonsense. So I will bar this. Instead, they're making yes. a super highway of anxiety. Yes. And this is actually making me upset at brain. Number five, your initial anxiety can lead to more intense anxiety. <laughs> yeah, we kind of <laughs> saw that one coming. Uh, you can't sleep. Yeah, you may become stuck on high alert. This is another one that not only affects your brain, but affects the rest of your body. Your adrenals get amped. And you end up uh, uh, running the pipes a little hot. They say uh, this comes from Aaron Carpenter, LCSW. Sure, uh, I know says, uh, yeah, she's good. Uh, another word for this is that your arousal in your brain is high. This is not sexual arousal. They're careful mm. to uh, clarify that, but psychological arousal. This means your brain's on high alert for danger, scanning the environment for possible threats. This all happens on a subconscious level, of course, so you may not be aware of it happening. But you will be aware that over time, you'll become more reactive to stressors and find it difficult to come back to calm baseline. And having your adrenals amp like that can lead to all kinds of autoimmune issues. And we've talked about autoimmune uh, over the last yeah. uh, couple of episodes where your body starts to attack itself. And that leads to number eight. Your cells begin to malfunction can lead to stem cell malfunction, creating a very rigid connection between two brain areas, the hippocampus and amygdala, which uh, leads to your brain being in a constant state of fight or flight. Ah, uh, I'm exhausted. This, actually, this goes back and connects to the very first cold open you delivered on our very first episode, where you brought to light the fact that there are cells that carry anxiety. That's right. And you reminded everybody, we're not talking about a pitch meeting. We are not. We're talking about <laughs> cells with a C. That's the worst part. That's right. So these cells carry anxiety and the brain's like, oh, you having trouble with traffic? Here's your hov uh -huh. lane to make sure That's that all right. the anxieties get through to where they need to. As I said then and I say it again, I do not care for it. <laughs> But here's the biggest one, Tommy. Oh, there's this more. This is the one. This is the one that hurts me the most. Parts of your brain will start 
to shrink. <laughs> now, we're gentlemen in our middle ages. We don't need to talk about anything more uh, that is shrinking That's in right. or around our bodies. Like our penis. Welcome to What's That Smell, a sometimes funny podcast about humans and their anxieties. I'm Tommy Metz III. And I'm Pete Wright. And every week, we drag out one of our deepest, darkest anxieties into the light to share it, learn about it, and hopefully laugh about it with all of you. Reach out. Send us the story of your anxieties to something stinky at rashpixel.fm. That's something stinky at rashpixel.fm. And with that, Tommy, yeah, it's the last episode of our first season. Holy cow. Episode 12. Can you believe that we made more episodes than two? <laughs> I, for one, cannot. <laughs> it is. It, it's been quite a ride. At we. Uh, this has been a, a fun experiment, a, a grand experiment, and uh, we've we have gotten some fantastic feedback from folks. We always planned on doing a, a first season with twelve episodes and just see if we could come up with enough anxieties to talk about that wouldn't make us sound like total lunatics. <laughs> I think we did that. <laughs> well, and, we did the first and, part. Yes, <laughs> we did the first part. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Reputation be damned, Tom. Hmm. <laughs> and, and so our plan is to, uh, we're going to take a little break. And part of that is because, you know, we've started this email thing. We want people to send you send us their, their anxieties. And we thought we would take a, a stab at a season two where we open it up a little bit and talk less uh, about ourselves or certainly about ourselves and the anxieties we share with uh, you wonderful listeners. And we've got a bunch of them that have been really fun to see come across our inbox. So we thought we would take today and that we would do a little bit of a retrospective. Oh, a flashback episode. It's like a little flashback episode. I love it. Which seems ridiculous now that I say it out loud. We've only done 11 other episodes to even think about. But I feel like... <laughs> Pete, who you can know, even remember when we started? Oh, I, <laughs> decades, decades ago, Lifetime Achievement Awards on their way. Yep. But the real thing about this, Tom, and the reason I like this episode 12 plan we've concocted here is because I have definitely changed uh, mm. or have noticed some new behavior in myself as a result of talking about our anxieties each week with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing to talk about. One of the biggest things that I've gotten back feedback wise from this podcast is it's a very fertile topic to talk about <laughs> and people want to maybe a just it was uh pete's idea it was your idea pete i'm telling you that just sort of having a lighthearted conversation about anxiety there's a lot of people that want to be a part of that which is fantastic which is thrilling because we didn't know if we'd just be doing this for two or three of our friends and it turns out there's like four or five of our friends <laughs> so <laughs> We do have a couple of bits of follow-up from some of our past episodes. But before we, we dig into the specific episodes, I, I want to ask you, Tom, as you look back on our conversations, as you look back on our opportunities to share our anxieties, do you yes. have a favorite? Do you have a, a number one anxiety that you have really enjoyed talking about in this particular show? My, actually, <laughs> my number one is not from me. It's from you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's it's the one, I believe it was, doop, doop, do episode three, where you uh, silence buried, buried deep, something like that. Either way, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I talked about my fear of silence. Uh -huh. And you talked about your fear of being buried alive. <laughs> Very, that escalated quick. Um <laughs> On my end, the idea of me talking about my fear of silence led to a large number of my friends the ne over the next, because we tape a little bit ahead of time. Yeah. So I forget exactly what has been released. But there was two <laughs> weeks where I would go out to social events with friends and they would take me aside and we'd start talking and they'd go, yeah. And then just <laughs> stare at me. And just stare at me. Or a couple of them actually went crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> and because they know <laughs> exactly my triggers to freak me out. So I both didn't care and cared very much for that. That's my favorite story. <laughs> yeah, I got a, tons of people just sort of staring at me because that was their big funny joke. And I did <laughs> love it. so funny, friends. <laughs> so funny. Uh, but then the other part of that episode, which I love so much, is a... 
more than a few people said, oh, it's just so interesting. And then Pete started talking about, you know, buried alive, being buried alive. Couldn't finish that episode because it was too scary. But anyways, <laughs> Pete, you might, on episode three, you might have, for a good reason, the least listened to fully episode of an anxiety because you're buried alive about thing. 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, it tapped into a lot of. Yeah, that is not a rare anxiety to have, apparently. that The idea of having someone tell you slowly what it's like to be buried alive <laughs> and to roll around in that anxiety, a lot of people happily weren't having it. So I guess that would be mine. How well, about yours? I, I certainly have not gone back to listen to that episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say that the, I, I do have one of those episodes where my friends have been trolling me, though, uh, mm. and, and <laughs> that is episode five. Uh, where we dig into uh, it was Pam and the Fashion Police, right? Uh, and so I can't go to a social engagement now without somebody looking down at what I'm wearing and saying, "Hmm, are those hemp pants?" <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I assume uh, the answer I, I, should always be absolutely. Well, I've got three pairs of them, Tom. Uh, of course you do. Odds, what are you going to do? Not wear them? Good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You think a podcast is going to keep me from wearing my favorite damn <laughs> pants? No way. <laughs> Episode one, uh, it, for me, was, I don't know, it, it, it's a little bit of a, a strange thing to talk about because I, I really didn't know where we were going with with that episode like i right. had that idea that was the idea that inspired the name of this podcast which i should add nobody liked <laughs> at all. what what's that but smell the what's nobody that liked smell, that? but i'm sticking with it even yeah. you didn't like it it took forever I, to get you to bought in i that still episode. yeah <laughs> still not know. crazy about it but uh but the but, the but remind the anxiety, anxiety remind people of the anxiety that you're talking about right now the anxiety that i was talking about was the particles when you smell something the particles of whatever substance you're smelling are actually going into your nose and of course oh right uh, people didn't was, care for that either yeah, that's right right i have gotten so many comments about that particular yep. anxiety uh yeah. the, and i'm so it's it's gratifying to know that so many people connected with that one that not only was i late to talk about it but i was woefully wrong about feeling so alone and having it so uh that was particularly gratifying can i um, jump in with a quick yeah. example of that a uh, friend of the show netta uh, she has a newborn ish. I think it's pretty much a newborn. Either way, she said she's a huge fan of the podcast. Just listen to the episode, which was number one of smells being real and real things going into your nose. While I was listening, I was changing a diaper. Thank you for ruining yep. my life. Yeah. <laughs> Great. yeah. So and you're your welcome. That's disgusting. Just yeah. Uh, just Thank you. Mess. <laughs> Hotbed of toxic particles going in your face all the time. Yep. Sorry. Uh, the the second episode uh, where I, I talked about cardiophobia, uh, mm. and and that's where we kind of uh, unpacked my my very first uh, serious panic attack while I was right. behind the wheel with my friend Ted, uh, right. that, that, who we'll call Ted. Um, and <laughs> uh, as it turns out, the feedback I got was directly from Ted, uh, who was a shocked that that happened uh, because as it turns out, I that's never right. came he didn't clean. Know. <laughs> I never That's right. told him this was going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, because he it was dealing with heart stuff in his family that very weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. And so he was quite surprised uh, that, that that had happened. And second, he was pretty pissed off that I didn't pull off sooner as the tunnel vision starts creeping in at 65 miles an hour. Because so, <laughs> you're the driver? Yeah, yeah you know, uh, it's good to have those kinds of things out in the open. Thank you, podcast. That's yeah. great. But I will say, a <laughs> listener sent me a resource from therapist Jody Amon, who had two things to add. Uh, and first was a, I know Jody. a mantra, she says. You'll know if you know Jody, you know she says this all the time. When you feel an attack coming on, you start saying to yourself, I'm safe. And you say it over and over and over because those words are particular trigger words for us in our brains. And I guess maybe they learn it, lay down new uh, uh, trans neurotransmitters for us. I don't know. But I'm safe is a particularly strong uh, uh, phrase that you say to yourself over and over and over. And then uh, keep moving. Apparently, she says, doing something changes the chemicals in the brain. It releases the GABA hormone that puts the brakes on the adrenaline. And so when she says do something, she just she means literally that move around, walk around, run, go for a jog, uh, breathe deeply and keep your body moving. Keep your blood pumping. So hmm. uh, I thought that was an interesting bit of follow up. That's great. I'm safe. I'm safe, safe over and yes. over again. I'm okay. safe over and over. Yeah. I feel those panic attacks uh, if you if you don't have a Xanax in your pocket, I guess. Sure. 
Uh, I remember that on episode four, we talked about uh, you feeling like an imposter, me not wanting to go to the bathroom in front of people. I feel like when we compare anxieties, you're dealing with like being buried. I don't know. I feel like such an idiot. But either way, yeah, I don't like going to the bathroom in front of people. Sorry. I love going to the bathroom. I was reached out by two friends. I will not mention their names that actually do suffer from paruesis, which is the yeah. fear of going number one, not number two. <laughs> Right. Which is interesting because I remember during the episode, I had said that I had never met nor would understand anyone that involved that part. Uh, but yeah, it is a big thing. And I feel bad about taking it lightly. Um, she did say that uh, her other friend, who I will, will remain nameless, knows this about her. And every time she goes to the restroom at uh, her friend's house, he keeps yelling in from the kitchen. I can hear you peeing. Uh, which so which mean. he thinks is hysterical. She does not. Uh, but more importantly, I have a very big update about episode four. Um, at one point, if you will remember, I said that with the research, as with most anxieties, it comes from a past traumatic event, as we've already talked about. Sure. Uh, and I said that nothing really traumatic had happened to me while I was potty training. So clearly I just came up with it on my own. Right. Well, well, Pete, I did a little research. <laughs> And by research, I mean, I got a call from friend of the show, my mother, (laughs) and she reminded me of a story that I did not remember at all because I was too young. It turns out that when I was trying, when she was potty training me, she had bought, as was fashionable back then in the, I was born in 75, and so it would have been, you know, mid to late 70s. She bought a doll. She doesn't remember what it's called, but it was supposed to pee. Like you, it's a doll that looks like a boy and you feed it. Through its mouth, like oh, water, sure. and then yeah, it pees. Yeah, you one of those it or something. Yeah, probably Tommy pees a lot or something. Right? <laughs> Ugh, why would I say that? Why would I bring up my nickname from college? <laughs> Anyways, you... <laughs> we're in the bathroom together. She closes the door, and I have to go. So she goes. Here's how it goes. And she feeds and she uh, feeds the doll a bunch of water, and she squeezes it, and nothing's happening. And she's sort of squeezing it and squeezing it, and nothing's happening. So she takes off its shirts and its pants. Nothing's happening. She's squeezing it. Anyways, flash forward as she says, she's now beating the doll <laughs> in the chest. Death Desperately trying to make it use the restroom to show me how it's done. And while this is happening, unbeknownst to her at the time, I just sort of walk over to the corner and pee on the floor. Hello, cats. So while I'm seeing my mother beat something that kind of looks like me, I went ahead and took care of business. So A, I'm clearly an entrepreneur, but B, maybe part of me took that as some sort of a signal of this uh, going to the bathroom in front of other people stuff. Not that great. So that might be traumatic, <laughs> traumatic enough. I'm not sure. But uh, thanks, Mom. I'm going to jump forward a little bit to a very recent episode, which was the one about uh, where I talk about my uh, needle phobia. Right. You know, we talked about the things that I really I, I I don't really care to visit again. You know, we talk about the lakes and rivers. I don't need to be a water person. I'm really OK. My life is fine. I don't need to be exposed to that. But dealing with needles is something that's very important. Yes. Uh, because at some point I'm going to be jabbed. You're going to be jabbed. Be- I'm going to be jabbed. You're going to be jabbed. And I got some advice from a therapist who is also a friend of the show uh, and and weirdly likes what we're doing here, who says I should really try eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Have you heard about this? EMDR? I have very recently just heard about this. You know, I uh, it, it was originally developed uh, uh, by uh, Francine Shapiro, who uh, is oh, yeah. uh, released this in 1989. She re- published her research in the Journal of Traumatic Stress. It was uh, uh, it, she had noted that when experiencing a traumatic event, uh, her eyes were involuntarily moving rapidly, and so uh, she developed a whole therapy and practice around post-traumatic stress disorder related to eye movement and Mm. that it has, if you feel a particular traumatic response coming on, EMDR can help reprogram you to not experience it as such. And I I am... Planning on moving forward to do a little bit you of are. Exposure, exposure work to, to clean this out. I need to feel better about needles, so I'm going to take this one on. So thank you so much for the guidance, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not. And that's a total lie. I'm. Oh, no, it sounds terrible, it I'm no, sure. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, yeah. But terrible. can you give a little bit of an a- example of what that entails? Well, I can't. I haven't done it yet, Tom. Oh, okay. Uh, it's so follow- that, Yeah, it's using your eyes and following a certain pattern with yes. your eyes in order to. Yep. Okay, got it. That's Great. my understanding. And uh, and so we'll try that probably uh, this summer. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about EMDR as a, uh, and that experience uh, next season. 
Here's That's hoping. really exciting, Pete. That's fantastic. Do you think that talking about it? Oh no, obviously, by definition, talking about it had your therapist bring it up. Not even, not even my therapist. How's that? It's just random. <laughs> <laughs> just random, random therapist, therapist oh. said, "Hey, you need to. Well, it's not that random, but it it, it is a. Uh, it's actually a good opportunity, and and it's time to to take care of this one. Uh, this is one that I care about. This is one I would surely like to deal with the medical community in a way that isn't so fraught with you know passing out. Sure. Um, so, oh, that's so, that's so great. It. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Fun. I actually have a lot of the uh, sort of a similar experience in how I'm changing my life, uh, based from an earlier episode, episode five. Mm-hmm. It's exciting for me uh, because as you're sort of getting this help done or you're planning to in the future, uh, you remember that I talked about that lake in Hideaway Lake uh, where yeah. my grandparents used to live. Um, and we used to play lake tag because it was so dark inside the lake. You couldn't see what was happening. Uh, I was recently told by someone that they have closed it and they closed it a long time ago. There's no more lake tag in that because yeah. they found out it had too much sewage in it. <laughs> from the surrounding houses. And so, <laughs> oh, so, helpful. <laughs> oh, how is this helpful? Yeah, I, this it's because so I'm never update. going to sleep and I'm never going to swim in that lake ever again. <laughs> is that the same kind of thing? Is you going to get help <laughs> because of a therapist? I'm not going to swim around yeah. in the sewage. Uh, during the summers anymore. A, because <laughs> was... my grandparents passed away, and B, apparently it was closed with sewage like <laughs> while I was growing up. <laughs> like we just stopped swimming in there, and none of them told us. There's a lot of things that my mother <laughs> is telling me later in life, all because of this podcast. Oh, that's what it is, Pete. I'm learning to know that my mother is a liar. <laughs> we know from episode one that your episode is a liar. Now yes. we know from episode 12, so is mine. Mothers are liars, and we love them. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> the one that I'm most, I guess, proud of? I don't know if that's the thing you say. I don't remember what episode it was, but I know it was called Woomph There at Eat Is because we episode love seven. puns. Episode mm-hmm. seven. Um, that is the the idea of me and my history of having trouble being asleep, going to sleep, I'm sorry, and being alone at night. I guess that's the barest i've laid myself out in front of everyone about that there's very few people that i've ever talked to and to make the choice to talk about it with you and to all of these people (laughs) i do take some pride on i'm glad that i was able to do that and i'm really glad that there were some people that got back to me saying that they used to have trouble like that or still even do to this point it does make me the definition of that anxiety was being alone or feeling alone to not feel that way you know made some of a difference so i'm very glad to have had such a weirdly public place to sort of get that off my chest and i appreciate it i it's a it, it's a funny uh it's a funny space to do that in a way that is both super public and super intimate yeah uh, and and I agree with you I mean I I think that was a that was a, a interesting episode because it was so easy to to think about um, uh, this as something that is relegated to childhood but it still had such resonance for you and that, that I think that was uh, that, yeah. that was really important uh, on a number of levels and I have gotten so much feedback from folks uh, who feel like uh, who, who were able to ref- to really truly resonate with that with that feeling mm. with that experience that sensory experience experience of the TV turning off. I mean, it was just such a, it, it was a great image. And I'm, I too am proud of you because I know that one was a, a tough one. Um, yeah. uh, we've, we've had a, a, a more fun maybe than we should have with our titles as the season uh, went on. I have to say, <laughs> I don't think there's a title I'm more proud of than just last episode, uh, episode 11, <laughs> eat, pray, run. <laughs> <laughs> that that delights me on a level that I just can't. I, I just I can't even with you people. I just can't. Your idea of changing the spelling of the word pray made the entire thing work for me. I'm a fan. I love the puns. I love the Pete Wright puns. I'm good. So good. And also, I I thought that you were going to say you were most proud of your uh, the anxiety you were most proud of was ants. And I am super Ugh. proud of you knowing how terrible that one was for you. But uh, yeah, that but, was. Yeah. <laughs> Just ugly. Am I am Just I ugly. still screaming about ants? I feel <laughs> no, like sometimes no, no, no. I'm worried that I'm still going on a rant about ants. An ant rant. Um, no, that was yeah. It was definitely leading up to that. That was the one that I had could have talked about in episode one, but we definitely wanted to. It is funny how many times my fear of ants came up in episode yeah. one through ten. 
<laughs> just yeah. basically just sort of yeah. off the side. So, yeah, I'm glad that everyone officially knows that I uh, answer the worst. There. Yep. Yeah, it's my best thing. We'll never know what could have been. Have you learned anything from your experience with this season, like talking about anxieties, researching anxieties? Any Has it changed anything about your, your world? I thought that I knew the basic idea that what you are worried about, you're not alone. A lot of people worry about them. And I think that maybe I accidentally just sort of put that as a platitude and put that in my sort of chamber of platitudes to sort of basically forget of everyone goes through this. And using this podcast to share anxieties, to talk with you, and we're getting from the feedback that we've gotten has really made that actually come true in a way that I'm, it's no longer a platitude is actually really true. <laughs> and there are people that want to hear about this and want to share. And it only helps, of course, to hear that you are not alone in these kind of things and that other people feel all of this same kind of struggle. Uh, it means the world to me, as I hope that it means the world to other people. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, for me, uh, anxieties are hard. <laughs> and I think talking about them week after week is, has really cemented that. They're, they're hard to talk about. And even as much uh, sort of enormous fun as I'm having doing the show with you, it causes a deep strain of meta anxiety to actually talk about them out loud on a podcast, right? It's really? the anxiety above the anxiety that will people relate? Will they like it? Will they like oh, me? Oh, that. Uh, sure. Like all of, of these things are just so stupid. But anxieties, when talked about, get easier. And I, I think for me, yes. I, I got a couple of lessons that, that have really stuck out as a result of this show i find i'm a hair trigger to talk about anxiety in any company uh, <laughs> i'll talk about this <laughs> i'm an, so annoying at parties but it turns out that uh, as you say because we're not alone that that's a surprisingly um, sort of interesting way to to connect at a different and and i think deeper level um you know being able to say hey that that thing you're doing right now it's it's making me anxious and I, i'm taking ownership of my fear by talking about it i'm finding new ways to accept myself in the face of what i perceive as my shortcomings right uh, and and i'm i'm finding it, it it makes me more honest with people that i relate with in the world and frankly my god i'm having the funniest conversations with people uh, you know, I, I was so worried when we started this idea that that we would be heralded as straight up just loons uh, and that no one would get it and uh, hmm. that it wouldn't be of any interest. Dead wrong. I, like, oh, my God, I have this thing that or I listened to that show you just did and I have to tell you or that, you know, getting emails from the doctor who says he can't watch his patients blow their noses with handkerchiefs when they're crying because he knows they're going to subconsciously wipe their eyes with the same hanky and he'll be obsessed with it all day. Like, that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> the the woman actually witnessing herself developing anxiety over skin diseases and reporting it to us in real time as it happens. These are yeah. anxiety gems, man. They are yeah. gems. And it comes with such deep satisfaction that these people are having fun with us as we yes. learn to laugh about these things together. Because I, 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 we, I we're not laughing at anybody anymore about their anxieties. No. Not Why at would all. we? No, not but, at all. No, and what you just said about having fun together, that I don't want to speak for you, Pete, but I think that that was the idea that you came up with for this podcast is the idea that bringing out anxieties into the light, but then also laughing at them a bit. That's important. I mean, anxiety is serious. Mm -hmm. No one on this podcast would ever argue that anxiety is incredibly serious can have a really big impact on your life. But anxiety is also, by definition, worrying about something that might happen that hasn't happened. And as a result, let's laugh at it. Screw you, dumb brains with your <laughs> weird super highways and your cells of anxiety. We don't need any right. of that. So it, we're dealing with it. It's a part of our lives. Some of us don't care for ants. That's fine. We live with it. But yeah, talk about it. Bring it up. Laugh about it. Make fun of it. All that stuff that takes the power away from anxiety. Anxiety has way too much power oh, over yeah. all of us, myself, very, very much included, if not at the top of the list. And so, yeah, it really does help a lot to talk about it and have other people be like, yeah, that is funny and bring up stuff. I mean, that's it means the world to me. It's what I spent most of my childhood not having. And by childhood, I would go through high school of yeah. not having yeah. an ability to just sort of open up about it, 
had I been able to do this a long time ago, uh, people probably would have said things like, what? What's a podcast? Point being, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a time machine, but point being, <laughs> yes, I think the idea of that uh, taking a light approach to it, which was always sort of supposed to be the idea, I think I would hope that it gives a little bit more of an avenue to people that aren't as used to talking about it and maybe don't want to get down in the trenches, but instead just want to bring it up, talk about it, poke some holes in it and see. I mean, it's helped me a great deal. Well, I on that point, I, I think my the, my biggest lesson, I think the, the surprise lesson that I did not expect out of doing this podcast is uh, that as a result of doing the show, I am more aware of the anxieties of others as a result of talking about my own anxieties, right? So okay. w- when I notice a behavior that feels familiar, if I see somebody moving a certain way around me, saying certain things, avoiding areas or people, I find myself slowing down, trying to be more patient in situations in which I might otherwise have been angsty. Uh, e- even if I'm dead wrong, I feel better about myself in trying to be more aware of other people who may be dealing with difficult things and and more willing to be transparent when I'm I'm dealing with those difficult things myself. Like I I, I feel like I'm I'm trying to be more understanding of those hidden kinds of anxieties, the things that we're terrified to talk about that we carry around sure. uh, in other people. And, um, that's, and you just that's said been a real and more gift. open and more open about your own. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make you weirdo because everyone has anxieties. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think the strength is the strength is being vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah. This is uh, it, it's been a real treat uh, trying this little experiment. And I'm excited to see what happens with season two. I, I, we we neither of us really know, uh, but we have gotten a number of fantastic things to talk about from you. Very uh, generous listeners, please keep sending them to us because you are essentially helping us build the program for next season. And, and we want to uh, continue to try and do uh, good, hopefully sometimes funny things uh, with yeah. uh, our own anxieties and with yours. Right. Cause we're not done. I still have some more. <laughs> I know I just did ants. Ants is my top of the list, but that doesn't mean that I'm not still neurotic about other things. So right. Season one I've got finale. A more. We got a whole new season to prep for. Believe me, we're a bucket of anxieties here. So, uh, <laughs> but perfect. yes, but you're right that it will be retooled in the way that it'll be a little bit more interactive. And we definitely want to uh, hear from you guys and get more of your feedback and your own, most importantly, your own anxieties so we can do research and we can work on all those as well. With that, Tommy, thank you so much for a fantastic uh, first season. This has been a, a real treat, and I can't wait to to jump into season two. And Pete, for me, um, this has been such an incredible experience that I never would have thought I would be a part of, and I'm so proud to be a part of it, and I owe you so much thanks for A, coming up with this idea, B, allowing someone like me... <laughs> to be in front of a mic with my annoying laugh and my terrible penchant for not understanding what we're talking about. And also uh, to actually, Pete, keep this in, please, uh, for the listening audience, the entire reason all of this sounds at all okay is because of my ho- my co-host Pete. Pete Wright gets all the credit for making us sound like we're not screaming into a tunnel next to a construction zone with our shoes and socks off. And also with the music and everything, Pete is the technological wizard of this show and had the original creative idea. Pete, you are my hero and you give me no anxiety. And that is the absolute, that is the what's that smell seal of approval. So thank you, Pete. It is such an honor to be a part of this. Oh, thank you, Tommy. That's very kind. No, I just wish I'd meant it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash sent of a podcast over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone and other little squares that fit in your pocket. You know, I, I understand how when you hear the number 180,000 titles, that can be pretty overwhelming. It's a lot. And you might be tempted to just say, I give up. No, thank you. I might be. Nope. 
done. I'm done. But we think that listeners of this show, listeners of What's That Smell, are bold and brave and willing to dive into the pool that is all 180,000 titles and share with us your favorite books. You have an assignment. Go over to audibletrial.com slash of a podcast. Browse the library. See if you find some books that are in your own on your own shelves uh, and share with us your favorite books uh, that we will share with others. We want to hear your favorite books. We want to hear your favorite narrators. Uh, we want to know what you are listening to on your commutes. Maybe it has something to do with anxiety. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you've just made some soup and you need to kill some time. Uh, <laughs> we still want to hear your favorite books from Audible. Yeah, so from now on, let us know when you write in to something stinky at rashpixel.fm. Again, that is R A S H P I X E L dot fm that is something stinky at rashpixel.fm let us know what you're reading and you will be a huge star on next season of what's that smell guys we don't pay to advertise this show so we really appreciate you sharing it with others you think would be interested in what we've been doing here we are not a new show anymore uh, but still even during our break these five star reviews in itunes and apple podcasts really help others to discover the show and right now, you guys, if a lot of you are WTS super fans, we really appreciate you. And you're about to help us do something very special. Because right now, as you're listening to this, the entire first season of What's That Smell is available for binging. And that means if we get a ton of reviews in there uh, right now, that will help people find us. They can binge season one and then they'll be ready for jump on season two. And that's the big push that we need to take over the podcast world. <laughs> so write your review. Give us five stars. Tell us what you like about it. Write into something stinky at rashpixel.fm. Right now is the time. If you've been putting off giving us a review or if you have an anxiety but you haven't quite gotten into writing us, now is the time. It'll be perfect. It'll help the podcast. You'll be on next season and we all get to go to heaven together. Correct? Pete! Oh, I didn't expect to take bring it back around uh, that way, Tommy, but still, to everybody, thank you all for joining us this week. Today's tune is Running by Mark Robillard. I'm Pete Wright. And I'm Tommy Mess the Third. Thank you so much for downloading. We will be back next season on What's That Smell? <laughs>